In November of 2020, the citizens of Colorado will get to decide if they want gray wolves reintroduced to their state. Ballot Proposition 107 is a citizen-initiated measure scheduled for the Colorado ballot on November 3, 2020. Under this proposition, the Colorado Parks and Wildlife Commission will be required to develop a science-based plan to restore gray wolves and oversee wolf restoration and management. As you can imagine, internet rumors, myths, fairy tales, conspiracy theories, fear mongering, and outright lies are in full flight around the internet, local bars, and hallways. So, we did some fact checking using facts, using the best available data, stats, demographics, and peer reviewed science. Sources and links will be provided in the description too, so feel free to pull up these sources yourself to fully vet the information. Wolves are already in Colorado. Mm, not so fast. Colorado Parks and Wildlife is aware of a few lone wolves that have made it to the state. These wolves died from vehicle collisions, shooting, or poisoning, or they simply disappeared. It is possible if not likely that other wolves have made their way into Colorado and have not been observed. Because of the difficulty of wolves getting through Wyoming, it is highly unlikely that enough will get through to establish a breeding population within the near future. And yes, we saw the news stories about the four, three or four wolves that were seen in Colorado last year. But again, that's not a population and there's not enough genetic diversity there to start a population. Wolves will put ranchers out of business. Mm, not hardly. In states where wolves reside, they account for about 1% of livestock loss, according to the USDA. Coyotes account for four times that much, and wolves are about the only thing that keep coyotes in check as humans killing coyotes has proven to be very ineffective. Furthermore, according to Colorado State University, Colorado Parks and Wildlife Commission would be required to A, distribute state funds to assist livestock owners in preventing and resolving conflicts between wolves and livestock. B, distribute state funds to pay fair compensation to livestock owners for losses caused by wolves. C. Not impose any restrictions on private landowners regarding land, water, or resource use. Keep in mind, most of these ranchers are already using federal land owned by we the taxpayer for way, way, way under market value. Wolves will kill all the elk. This is a big lie and a myth. Elk numbers have actually gone up in Montana since 1996, and all the states where wolves were reintroduced still have excellent elk hunting every single year. While they do have some impact on elk populations, the elk soon adjust and populations come into balance. In Minnesota, where you have more wolves than Idaho, Wyoming, and Montana combined, white-tailed deer, wolf's favorite prey there, are still well above goals according to Minnesota DNR. Balance is a key word here. Every entry level ecology class will tell you that balance is a good thing and overpopulation is a very bad one. But what about moose? It seems many in the wolf haters column want to blame wolves for everything. Who knows, maybe they even helped fake the moon landing. But according to Colorado State University and the science, Moose in North America are having lots of problems, including parasites, deforestation, fires, and human development, and predators. But those predators include bears and cougars. Moose are having trouble in places in Wyoming where wolves don't even exist. And Colorado State has summed up that Colorado supports an abundant prey base for wolves. This includes 430,000 mule deer, and 280,000 elk, the largest elk population of any state. The largest mule deer and elk herds occur in western Colorado. If occurring in high enough population numbers for enough time, 
wolves in Colorado might locally impact some big game herds and hunting opportunities. This is more likely if wolf predation acts with other factors that limit prey such as severe winters. At a statewide level, wolves are unlikely to have a major impact on overall big game populations or hunting opportunities in Colorado based on evidence from northern Rocky Mountain states. That's from again from Colorado State University. So what about the ecological effects of wolves? Well, according to Colorado State University and piles of peer-reviewed research, wolves can do a lot of good for an ecosystem. So what is a tropic cascade? Predators at the top of the food chain are known as apex predators. They can cause ecological effects that ripple through an ecosystem. These are called tropic cascades. A growing number of studies globally have documented tropic cascades generated by apex predators. Apex predators such as large carnivores are some of the first animals to decline or disappear when they share landscapes with people. Large carnivores are particularly susceptible because they're naturally low numbers, wide ranges, and active predator control by people. Their loss can have cascading effects that alter aquatic and terrestrial systems throughout the world. Wolves and tropic cascades have been studied in Yellowstone, Banff, Jasper National Park, as well as Isle of Royal. So, in Colorado, that means ultimately, if restored to Colorado, wolves might generate ecological effects where they occur in high enough de densities for a long enough time. Wolves are more likely to cause ecological effects when they contribute to local reductions in prey populations, working in concert with other factors that also limit prey, such as adverse weather, habitat decline, other predators, or human hunting. In other areas with lower densities of wolves, the ecological effects of wolves will be less evident. But I thought wolves were dangerous to people and pets. Yes, they do attack loose dogs at times because they see them as part of a rival wolf pack, but attacks on humans are very, very, very rare. In fact, there have only been about 27 attacks on humans in over 100 years by healthy wild wolves, and most of these were food-conditioned wolves. In short, don't feed them and they won't bother you, but wolves are normally pretty afraid of humans. But, but, I read on the internet that they brought in the wrong wolf. Ah, uh, the Canadian super wolf is a myth that just won't die. Truth is, there is some debate over what subspecies there are actually in North America. The only one that displays any significant morphological or genetic differentiations is Canis lupus bailey, aka Mexican gray wolf. It is also the only wolf recognized as a subspecies by the National Academy of Sciences because there are so little differences in the other so-called subspecies in North America. Wolves in Minnesota tend to run a little smaller than wolves in Montana because they have adapted to feed on white-tailed deer instead of elk and bison. The wolves that lived in Wyoming and Montana 100 years ago would have been slightly larger too, as they would have fed on elk and bison. Ah, but what about those tapeworms? This fear mongering is referring to Hydatid disease, which is caused by Econococcus tapeworm. Let me repeat that real slowly for those in Idaho. Just kidding, Idaho. Econococcus. Canines, such as wolves, coyotes, foxes, and domestic dogs are the definitive host and ungulates such as deer, elk, moose and domestic livestock are intermediate hosts. In rare circumstances humans may be infected by accidentally ingesting eggs but direct human infection from wolves is extremely unlikely unless you ingest wolf feces. So no matter how many Paps Blue Ribbons you've had, and no matter how much your beer buddies dare you to do it, don't eat wolf poop. Just saying. So there you have it. Some of the myths 
fairy tales, lies going around the internet about wolves and wolf reintroduction in Colorado. I know I probably left out a few, so um, if you have some more that I haven't covered, just put them in the comment section and they will be discussed. But get out and vote either way if you live in Colorado. If you like this video and you want to learn more about wolves and wolf dogs, please hit the like button and subscribe. Thanks.